The Field Spaniel is a well-balanced, substantial hunter companion, prized for his endurance and perseverance in heavy cover or in water. He's a pleasing companion of beauty and utility, with an intelligent, sensitive temperament. The Field Spaniel's origins lie in the English Midlands of the mid-19th century, where it was the most popular spaniel for work or show. Crosses of several different spaniel breeds produced a black dog to dazzle the show ring judges of the day. Proportions became so exaggerated that by the early 1920s, breeding programs were adopted to reverse the trend and produce a more well-balanced animal, well able to serve as a hunting companion. The field spaniel was described as having an excellent nose and was generally capable of a long and hard day's work. The breed was admitted to AKC registration in 1894. You'll be seeing many field spaniels during this presentation. Some are outstanding examples of the breed. Others are less so. But all will help your understanding of the breed. In general appearance, the Field Spaniel is a combination of beauty and utility, a medium-sized dog built for activity and endurance in heavy cover and water. It has a noble carriage and a proud but docile attitude. It is a sound, free-moving dog. Remember, as you judge the Field Spaniel, that symmetry, gait, attitude and purpose are more important than any one part. Size, proportion and substance must all be in balance. The ideal height at the withers is 18 inches for adult dogs and 17 inches for adult bitches. A one inch deviation above or below the stated ideal is acceptable. In proportion, the field spaniel should be somewhat longer than tall, like this. Body length should be measured from the foremost point of the shoulder to the rearmost point of the buttocks. The correct ratio of length to height is about seven to six, as we see here. The field spaniel should be of good substance, solidly built, with moderate bone and firm, smooth muscles. Let's begin our detailed discussion of the field spaniel with a head. The head is unlike that of any other spaniel breed and sets the field spaniel apart from his cousins. It should convey an impression of high breeding, character, and nobility, and must be in proportion to the size of the dog. From the side, the skull is characterized by a distinct rounded occiput Brows are slightly raised, and there is a moderate stop, but it is well defined by the brows. You can see that the muzzle is strong, long, and lean. It's neither snipey nor squarely cut. The nasal bone is straight, like this, but is slightly divergent from the plane of the top skull. The face is chiseled beneath the eyes. The lower plane curves gradually from nose to throat. This muzzle is narrow and snipey and is incorrect. A blocky and heavy muzzle is also undesirable. This correct head has a long, lean muzzle and a distinct rounded occiput. Note again the slightly raised brows. From the front, see how the crown of the skull is slightly wider at the back than at the brow. It is also slightly arched from side to side. Cheeks are straight and clean. Note the chiseling beneath the eyes, which is correct. The nose is large, fleshy, and well-developed with open nostrils. 
it should be set on as an extension of the muzzle and is solid colored. It can be light to dark brown or black according to coat color. Lips should be close fitting, clean, and sufficiently deep to cover the lower jaw without being pendulous. The field spaniel's bite can be either scissors or level, although a scissors bite is preferred. There should be complete dentition. Occasionally, the two bottom middle incisors will be slightly misaligned. This is not to be penalized. Eyes are almond-shaped, open, and of medium size, like these. They're set moderately wide apart and moderately deep. See how the lids are tight, with no haw. In color, the eyes range from dark hazel to dark brown, with the eye rims comparable to the nose color. The loose lower lids seen here are not proper, as they can collect dust and seeds in the field, which can cause irritation and injury. These light-colored eyes are not correct. They are also too large and too round. These eyes are the correct almond shape and set moderately wide and deep. Ears are moderately long, reaching about to the nose when laid against the muzzle. The leather is wide and set on slightly below eye level. They're pendulous and hang close to the head, as these do. The leather is moderately heavy, supple, and rounded at the tip. From the front, you can see how the ears are rolled and well feathered. This is a lovely head overall producing the typical field spaniel expression, grave, gentle, and intelligent. Now let's consider the field spaniel's neck and body. The neck is long, strong, and muscular, like this. It is slightly arched, clean, and well set into the shoulders. See how it slopes smoothly into the withers. Shoulder blades should be oblique and sloping with the upper arm close set and elbows directly below the withers. There should be a prominent, well-fleshed prosternum like this. This dog's shoulders appear to be too straight. From the front, you can see how the elbows are held close to the body, turning neither in nor out. The forelegs should be straight and well boned to the feet. The chest is moderately wide and deep, reaching to the elbow and being approximately equal in depth as the distance from elbow to ground. This dog's chest appears too wide, forcing the elbows out and the feet in. This dog's forequarters appear correct from the front and from the side. See how the shoulders are oblique and sloping with the elbows in line with the withers. Forelegs are straight and well boned to the ground. Pasterns should be moderately sloping but strong like these. Feet face forward and are moderately large rounded and webbed. They must be capable of carrying the dog all day in bogs and other wet areas. The toes are well arched and relatively tight and the pads are thick. Dew claws may be removed. The field spaniel's body is characterized by a level firm top line. The back should be well muscled and strong. The ribs are oval, well sprung, and curved gently into a short, strong loin. Note the length of rib cage, which should be about two thirds the body length, like this. This dog is too short in back and has a roached top line. 
a soft bag is also undesirable. This correct top line is firm and level. There should be very little tuck up. Puppies and young adults, however, will have a noticeable tuck up. The dog's croup and tail set are correct too. The croup is short and gently rounded, while the tail is set on low in line with the croup. It slants downward when the dog is at rest and should be docked to balance the overall body proportions. Hindquarters are strong and driving, in keeping with the field spaniel's function as a hard-working field dog. Stifles and hocks are only moderately bent, in keeping with the angulation of the forequarters. The upper thigh is broad and powerful, and the second thigh is well muscled. The hocks are well let down. Like the front feet, the rear feet are large, rounded, and webbed, with thick pads and well-arched toes. Dew claws, if they appear, must be removed on the rear feet. From the rear, the hocks are relatively short and parallel. Note the moderately broad muscular hips. This dog's cow hocks are incorrect. And here, the hips and thighs appear weak and not well muscled. These hindquarters are correct. Now let's consider the field spaniel's coat. The coat is single and lies flat with moderately long feather. It is dense and water repellent. It can be slightly wavy or flat. It is silky and glossy in texture, not cottony. This coat is too long and impractical for field work. This coat is of correct length and texture. Furnishings include setter-like feathering on the chest, underbody, backs of the legs, buttocks, and the underside of the tail. Pasterns have clean outlines all the way to the ground. Short, soft hair can be found between the toes. Trimming of the coat should enhance the natural appearance of the dog, not distort it. Excessive trimming of the coat should be discouraged. As for color, the coat may be black, liver, golden liver, or roan, or any of these colors with tan points. A small amount of white on the chest or throat, or on both, is allowed. A narrow stripe, as seen on this well-marked liver and tan dog, is also allowed, but a wide shirt front is not. A roan coat will show intermingling of colored hairs, like this. Be sure to check on the white parts, like this. The field spaniel should be shown at its natural gait, an endurance trot, like this. Typical breed movement should include good forward reach all the way from the shoulder. There should be no bounce or roll. There should be good drive from the rear in balance with the front motion. There is an effortless, long, low, majestic stride. Coming toward you, the front legs move straight ahead, not out to the side. There will be slight convergence toward a center line at faster speeds. Going away, you can see the powerful push of the hindquarters. See how the rear legs remain straight from hip to hock. There is also slight convergence. This dog is narrow in front. And here we have a lack of rear drive. 
Here again is correct movement, straight and clean. There should be no wasted motion and no bounce or roll. See how the head is carried alertly above the level of the back and the tail is carried level with the back or slightly downward with a wagging action. Gay tails are faulty. The field spaniel's endurance and enthusiasm in the field is coupled with an unusually docile, even fun-loving temperament. The breed has a great affinity for human companionship and has always been prized for its loyalty and devotion to hearth and home. Somewhat reserved at first, the field spaniel will gradually warm to new people and situations and can be counted on as a trusted family member. In judging the field spaniel, don't come down heavily on the dog or hover over him. Remember that any display of shyness, fear, or aggression is not typical of the breed and should be severely penalized. A shy dog will be shy with his owner or handler. A reserved dog will be relaxed and happy with his handler. Once subject to the whims of fashion, the field spaniel has taken his place as a hearty, tireless worker and devoted family companion.